Abraham bound for the promised land? <laughs> Hallelujah, he says. It's good to be in church this morning. What a way to start the year off. I tell you, we can think about everything great that happened last year and be excited and encouraged about that, knowing we're looking for another year of the same kind of stuff is exciting as well. If you're visiting with us today, we want to say we're glad you're here. We appreciate you coming today. It means a lot to us, and if we can do anything to, to be a blessing to you, to help you, that would uh, just let us know. We'll be glad to help any way we can. See some, some new faces and some older faces coming around. See brother, I see Brother Alvin back there. He finally came. He's going to keep Doug straight this morning. I told him while I go, I said, ma'am, if you could keep him straight today, we won't have to ask him to leave again. So he said he's going to flick him on the ear and stuff. So it's good to have you here too, Alvin, as well. And uh, it's a blessing to be here. And I'm excited about the service we're going to have today. I'm looking at this paper of announcements thinking, where do I start? <clears throat> but we have a lot to talk about, so let's get into the announcements. Uh, there is a church calendar of events available in the foyer. So if you want to get that, that is for the entire year, some of the bigger events that we have throughout the year on that calendar. So you can go ahead and make some plans to be there, sir. Except in November. Except in November. <laughs> There's nothing in November because that's a rut, right? If you're a deer hunter, you know what we're talking about. Uh, today at 4 o'clock, we'll be having choir practice. Uh, to Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, we'll be having visitation. If you can make it to that, that'll be a blessing. Wednesday at noon, we'll have a prayer meeting, and they, we will start back with having our Wednesday meals uh, this week at 6 o'clock, starting this Wednesday night before the evening service. And then Brother James just said amen, he ain't said that all year, so <laughs> we're already off to a good start. Way to kick off the year, brother. Also, we'll, uh, we'll be having a baby shower here at the church on Saturday, January 14th for Miss Megan. Uh, it's to be from 1 to 4. She is registered at Amazon and Target. Brother Ricky did say he does accept cash as well, so keep that in mind. I'm trying to help you, brother. I'm here. I'm trying to be a blessing. It says, it says, feel free to come dressed in 70s attire. My kids told me I wouldn't have to change clothes. I could just show up. So I don't know what they were trying to say without that, but we'll worry about that also. There will also be a diaper raffle. Please RSVP with Rachel or Miss Tracy about uh, attending that shower that day, and your participation will be greatly appreciated. Uh, Wednesday, excuse me, the Men's Fellowship is January 16th at 6 o'clock. And that night we'll be eat, we'll get the, the, the grills out, we'll be cooking some meat, and the church will provide some potatoes and desserts, and we'll have a good cookout time with that. Uh, so make plans to be here January 16th. It starts at 6. If you can't get here at 6, we're usually still eating around 7 or 7.30, so just come when you can, and um, we'll have a good time that evening. <clears throat> also on January 28th, y'all thought I was kidding when I said there was a full sheet of announcements, didn't you? Goodness. Now on January 28th, beginning at 8 o'clock in the morning, we'll be having a work day. We're going to get ready and try to get everything ready for our missions conference, our Faith Promise Missions Conference we're having January 29th. And on February 12th is something Brother Jesse will probably talk about a little bit more later on, but I'm going to go ahead and give it, uh, get it to you so you can be thinking about it. On February 12th, we'll be having I Love My Church Sunday. And that's a, like a friend day type of event. We're going to invite a bunch of uh, people to come and visit with us that day and uh, just really uh, show the community how much we love our church, how much our church loves them. And after this morning service that day, we'll be having a potluck, potluck meal after uh, for lunch. And then go ahead and put in your calendars from March the 6th through the 10th. That's our annual Jubilee um, <clears throat> service, uh, excuse me, revival meeting. Uh, March there in March and we'll be having a good time with that we'll talk more about the preachers coming to that later on but we will on our J dollars that we take up on Sunday nights we'll be going to that meeting in the expenses so if you will keep that in mind and be in prayer for it we'll appreciate it all right guys y'all ready to come take up some offerings all right all right brother Keith if you would pray for the offering this morning our great heavenly father we just want to thank you for the wonderful day you've given us, Lord. Just thanks for uh, filling this church, Lord. Just ask you to help us this year, Lord, that we we just uh, look to you for guidance, look to you for uh, for everything, Lord, not on ourselves, Lord. We just ask you to watch over our preacher, be with the singing done, just everything that's done here, Lord. 
is to honor you, not ourselves, Lord. We just ask you to take this offering, Lord, and use it to further your word and help this uh, help this place, Lord, that we uh, we give where we need to, Lord. We just thank you and we just love you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. You know, way back in another millennium, when uh, Brother Ed started the church, the theme was where Jesus is everything. And uh, this morning we want to sing, Jesus, what a wonderful name.
the one crying in the wilderness the baptizer spoke of one who was to come baptizing with fire when John woke me up this morning with blessings untold a precious loving family in a house we call home the promise of eternal life because of Calvary the peace he settled in my heart since the day he
Brother Tyler, you turn the lights off back here real quick. We just got a quick video. I know the Lord's moving. I'm just going to keep letting him do his thing. Uh, I got, I thought, we had this video, and uh, I thought, what better time to show it uh, than in the middle of that song. Well, look what all God has done. And so if y'all would, this is from this year. were many my heart grew cold fellowship was broken i felt so all alone oh but it didn't matter how far i'd gone god was still faithful when i came back home my sins were forgiven grace to me was shown now i stand here before you Rejoicing, everything's all right, cause in my heart, I know that I am safe. Oh, and now I long to do God's will. Yes, I know I fail Him still, but I'm so glad that His grace never God we serve I just look around this room and I see all the results of all those prayers and uh, just testimony after testimony of uh, souls that were saved you know I think about think about Miss Jessica back here one night we were sitting at a IHOP it was about 8 or 9 o'clock Brother Josh called me. He said, "I," he said, "Do you have time to talk?" And, and I said, "Yeah, I can. I can talk." And I said, "Is this?" Uh, and I, you know, as a, as a pastor, Lord kind of gives you some discernment. And I kind of knew where it was headed. I said, "Is this one of those 
you need me to come by and talk or you just talk over the phone? He said, I, if you could come by. I was all the way in Monroe. I said, well, I'm in the area. He lives in Staley. I said, I'll be there as fast as I can. I went in there and that night in their living room, I got to leave Miss Jessica to the Lord. And man, I think about just story after story after story of what God's done in this place. And I think about each and every soul that's sitting in here and how God's changed lives. And it's not, it's not me, and it's not, but it's a whole, it, it's a whole collective, but it's, it's God. Look what God has done. It's not because I'm a great preacher, because y'all know that ain't the case. And it's, it's not because, it's not because we have good singers, it's not because we have a, the best music in the world, but it's because, it's because one day, Brother Mac. We opened up a door. The Lord said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And he said, If you'll let me in, I'll come in and sup with you. He said, I'll have fellowship with you. And you know throughout Scripture, wherever he goes, if he's in the house, he's changing things. If you let him in, he's going to change some things. He's going to save some souls. He's going to heal some sick. He's going to change some lives. He's going to answer some prayers. Amen, Miss Megan. He's going to answer some prayers. He's going to bring life where you thought there was no life. He's going to bring, he's going to bring joy and peace where you thought the joy and peace had already departed and was gone. He's going to bring it back to life. He's going to, when you open the door and let him come in, he's going to fix the things that you thought were permanently broken. See, when I took this church in the middle of the pandemic right in the middle of it two years ago in October September I mean right in the middle and the devil was the devil would come in and say yeah what you gonna do with this well how you gonna how you gonna uh, how you gonna run a church Mr. Uh, preacher in the middle of a pandemic see I'm putting this on because I'm about to get excited I might move around just a little bit but he said how are you going to how are you going to start a church in the middle of a pandemic when other churches are telling you to close down and be smart how are you going to build a church You know, I would be driving home some nights with my wife and my children. And I'd look over and my wife would be crying and saying, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we going to make it? Is the church ever going to grow? Is the church ever going to be anything? And I have to just tell her, just hang on. I believe God's going to do something. And there'd be Sundays I'd be driving home crying, saying, Mama, I'm done. Next week, I'm quitting. When I get up Sunday morning, I'm resigning. I don't, tell you, I don't know how many resignation letters I done tore up. Read out and tore up. And she'd say, just hang in there. It's going to work. You just keep preaching. Don't change. And you just keep preaching. It's going to grow. People are going to come. Just hang in there. And then there'd be times when both of us be crying. And we'd get a phone call or a text message from somebody and say, Don't quit. Just don't quit. I know it's hard. Just hang in there. And the devil would just, he just, he'd ride down the road with me. And I'd be sitting at home or laying in the bed. He'd get up beside me and he'd say, what are you going to do? You called them, but they didn't show up. He'd say, hey, 
and you've been praying for this one for a long time, guess what? They ain't, they ain't here today. I'd be sitting on the platform. He'd, he'd come sit down beside him and he'd say, what you going to do? Come on, get up and preach. What you going to do? But I was back here in my office this morning. Guess what? He wasn't saying nothing. Amen. I opened up my office door. I said, hey, hey, where are you at now? Hey. I walked around the back of the hallway. Hey, where are you at now, big boy? Listen, there's a bunch of them in here saved, born again, on their way to heaven. There's family sitting out there this morning ready for church. Hey, they come to worship the Lord. Where are you at now? Didn't have much to say this morning. Man, you can't beat him. Look at what all he's done. Over and over and over. I had to I had to I had to learn what the hashtag meant but now I'm, but on some of them posts you'll see that hashtag it, it said a great work and I preached a series out of the book of Nehemiah for a while here and was talking about and I just kind of thought that was our theme for the year of 2022 was kind of building and battling I don't know if you've ever heard brother Curtis Hudson preach a message on building and battling and I felt like that's where we were last year. We would build and then we'd have to fight a while. And then we'd build some more and then we'd have to fight some more. But this year, I, I, I really feel like the theme for our year is all in. I, I, I felt like the Lord has really uh, nudged me and, and pushed me into... To, to that being our theme for 2023 is all in. Just being all in. Thank y'all. Y'all can, don't go far. Just maybe stay right there. Being all in. You know, I preach Wednesday night out of this passage of scripture on launching out. And I preached uh, about the Lord coming to, to Simon Peter right there in the Right there in the dock, right there. And, and he, the Bible says that he stepped on his boat. There were two boats. And, and, and the Lord Jesus stepped on his boat. And he asked him, he told him to launch out a little bit. Uh, and so that really, uh, so that he could speak to, to the crowd. And this is what I like about the Lord. I, you know, I think a lot of times the Lord has... Uh, uh, well, he knows what he's doing. You know, he it wasn't he was speaking to the people, and and I, I believe he really uh, he was he was genuinely uh, concerned about the crowd, and he spoke to them and uh, gave them what they had asked for. They came, and they Bible says as they pressed on him, they wanted they wanted to hear him speak, they wanted to hear him preach, and the Bible says that he he told Simon. But just think about this for a second, that there's one, there's two, several boats sitting there. And the Bible says there was two boats, and then he stepped on the one boat. Which tells me he really wasn't there for the crowd. I, I, I don't believe. I, I, because he, you know, he, everywhere he went there was a crowd. But there was always a story inside the crowd. 
You know, the crowd that pressed on him and they were trying to get to him, but then there was the one that touched the hem of his garment. And then there was a crowd where they was all in the house. And, uh, but then there was the one that was let down from the roof. Well, then here's a crowd. We see another crowd, and they're gathered together. But then we see Simon, Peter, James, and John on a boat, and he picks that boat. Very first time that Peter, James, and John that I know of, I guess, really came in contact with Jesus. And he picked their boat, he stepped onto their boat, and he said, if you would, just, just launch out a little bit so that I can talk to these folks. This is, you know, in Hebrew and all. He said, just, just go out a little bit, let me talk to them. And, uh, and then, and then he, he tells them, Brother Mac, after he's speaking, uh, he says, go on down there, if you would, about a verse. Keep going. And he told him, he said, go on out, verse 5. He said, and he said, we've taken, the Lord tells him, go on out. He said, drop your nets again. And then Simon, just like most Baptists, has something to say. Answered and said, Master, we've told all night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, we'll let down the net. Go, go ahead. And they, and when they had done this, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. And they beckoned unto the, the, their partners. They yelled back to the shore said, Hey, guys, hey, y'all come over here. There's so many fish here, we can't even hold them all. Ain't that how they spoke back in? Boy, we've caught a mess of fish. He said, call home, tell mommy, get that cornbread ready. We got a mess of fish. And they said, come help us. Come. And they came and they filled both the ships so much so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at his knees saying, depart from me. I'm a sinful man, O oh Lord. Man, when you, when you, the Bible tells me that the goodness of God leads to repentance. When you start seeing the goodness of God, Brother Kevin, you start seeing how good He is, what just makes you want to repent? Say, I'm sorry. Lord, I, whatever it is, Lord, I'm, 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 forgive me of my sins, forgive me of my failures. Lord, you're so good. And the Bible says that he was astonished and all that were with him and the draw of the fishes which they had taken. And so also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon and Jesus, said unto, him, said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Verse 11, now get this. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all. And followed him. At that point they said you know what. I'm all in. Peter looked over at James and John. He said hey. I don't know about you. But I'm all in. Man we fished here all night long. And we, we toiled and we tried. And we did everything we could. And it didn't work. This guy shows up. Tells us to launch out just a little bit. Push out from the land, and then all of a sudden we got so many fish, we're sinking two boats. And and listen, he's saying, Hey, I'm all in. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going with him. And listen, that's about how I feel this morning. Amen. Listen, I look back at last year and I think about the, the Sundays that we had about two years ago, and maybe on a Sunday morning we might have had. 50 or 60 people in here and listen I'm looking around this morning and we've got uh, we've got we've got a good crowd and listen I, I listen to them kids upstairs running around looking up there right now and I'm seeing them all sitting up there man I'm thinking if God can do that right there I'm all in with him amen listen I, I'm so thankful this morning and I'm so grateful and so glad of what God has done in this place hey listen I'm here to tell you this morning that I'm all in today there's no reason for me to just say, well, I don't know. He's proven himself. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Number one, if you're taking notes, we see that divine appointment. 
that divine appointment. In order for these men to have experienced what they experienced, they had to be on the right boat, the right place, the right time. And you know what they were doing? They were working. They were just busy working. Doing their thing. Cleaning their nets. Cleaning their boat. I don't know, maybe getting ready. The Bible says they'd been out all night. Maybe they were getting ready to come in and take a break and uh, maybe try again later on. But uh, the Bible says that they were, uh, they were busy working. And because of that, now I can imagine maybe, I don't know, it doesn't say this, but maybe the Lord walked by a couple of them boats and he saw some guys asleep or saw some guys laying there. They didn't really care about their nets. They didn't really care about their ship. They didn't care about their boat. They didn't really care about it. But they walked by these three men and these three men were working. They were cleaning their nets and they were, uh, they were just working. And, and the Lord might have looked at them and said, you know what? If after a whole night of fishing they didn't catch a thing and they're still still care enough about uh, about what they're doing to just keep 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 it clean, keep it right, maybe I'll just step on that boat. That's the right boat. You know, I I think about this place. And, um, I can't help but think that that ain't why God didn't just show up like He did here last year. Because we might not have had, Brother Benny, last year in the Christmas play, we might not have had but about six, eight kids. But we still had a play. And we might not have had a whole bunch of them, but we still tried. And we didn't have much of a choir. Maybe about, I think one morning we might have had some, maybe eight on this front row. But we still had a choir. And there was some mornings, I remember, I remember one morning I walked out here and I, it was one of them, one of them mornings that devil just, I looked around and there might have been 20 people. Maybe on a Sunday morning. Maybe. And I thought, well, this is it. This is the end. <laughs> I was worried. The offering wasn't nothing. A few hundred dollars. I thought, man, we're this is it. We're done. But you know what? You know what we did? My wife got on the piano and she played. And somebody led the music. Brother Tony. Got up here and led the music. And I got up here and preached. And I preached to that 20 like I was preaching to you right now. And I'm not saying that with pride. I'm not saying that with any kind of thing to talk about me. But I'm telling you, listen, I have a, I have a piece of paper on my desk that I've had uh, for years. I've, I've carried it around for years since God called me to preach. It says preach to five just like you'd preach to 5,000. And listen, I've tried to do that ever since God called me to preach. And listen, that's what I did that morning. I got up and I preached. We had an invitation. And we came back Sunday night. And then we came back Wednesday night. And we did it week after week after week after week after week. Listen, we tried our best uh, to be about the Father's business. And then one Sunday morning, there was a divine appointment in here. And some of y'all know the exact day I'm talking about. I walked out of there, and the crowd was about like it is this morning, maybe a little more. And I said, what in the world's going on? I, I did. I, I went to my wife. I said, what, what's going on? What's wrong? <laughs> I said, are they here to vote me out? I said, they've called in reinforcements to get a vote. I said, they're going to vote me out. I thought, these are charter members from the, back 20-something years ago. They've called them in to get the numbers. And God just showed up that morning. Miss Brenda, 
and Miss Beth, my wife, got up and they sang, Say Amen. And it just so happened, it just so happened, that was the week that Brother Austin and Miss Peyton were here for the very first time. And they were going to another church, but, but, but God. He said he got up that morning, he just couldn't, he said, he said we had planned to visit a few churches around and see where God wanted us to go. And he said that, and listen now, I've got a book in my truck that I pray out of. And in that book it, it says youth pastor. And it says song leader. And it says singers. And my wife's got a prayer book beside her bed that says singers and young adults. It's what we've been praying for, for for this church. And then and then all of a sudden I see this young preacher and he's sitting back there just worshiping, crying. He said that all week long that the Lord had been just heavy on his heart telling him to come to grace. Never been here before. Ain't that something? Now he's our youth pastor. I mean, he ain't, he ain't much, but Y'all looking around where he's at. He's at the hospital with that baby. Y'all pray for that baby. He's in the NICU. He's got some problems with his lungs. I went and saw him yesterday. And I stood in that room there and I was thinking, man, look what God has done. I was looking at that little baby boy. And man, just one thing after another, after another. And I, I, I thought about, I thought about uh, the other night we had our, we was getting ready for our Christmas play. And these men showed up to build. And I was, I was looking at Brother Brown and Basil. And I thought, man, what a blessing. I thought, I thought, I keep, I, I'll never forget the Wednesday night. Now, Brother Brian, his wife, she she was lost when they first got here, and they, uh, he he was saved, and and every invitation I'd give, he would he would hit her, and he'd go like that, like you need to go get saved. Every invitation, I, nobody else saw it, but I, I was wide watch him. I think, man, that's the funniest thing, and and he and she'd be like, Brian, quit, you know. But I'll never forget on a Wednesday night, on a Wednesday night, she had had all she could stand. And Brian then was in her way. And she busted past him crying, come down here. And Brother Brian was looking at me like, yeah, he said, it's finally going to happen. And, 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 and man, I've thought about I've thought about the souls. You know, Miss Debbie told was telling us that when she got here that one of her burdens was leading people to the Lord. And we've and she's had the opportunity on these altars. And Brother Christopher and Brother Jim and some of these others have had the opportunity to lead over a hundred people to the Lord this year on these altars and in that room. And upstairs, those bus kids getting saved. You know, that's a divine appointment. A lot of a lot of you sitting here this morning, you, you had a divine appointment in this place. I got a text message one one day from Stephen Bell. Said, "Hey, I got a family that's living out there near y'all. My family." He said, "I'd like for you to go see them." I went and saw them, and I didn't quit. I just kept going back. I said, they're going to answer the door one of these times. I'd leave a track, go back, leave a track, text them, call them. And they joined our church last week. Look what God has done. And there's, listen, we could, I could go on. Cash is sitting up there this morning. I don't know where he's been. I'm going to get on to him. He ain't been here in a while. But that, that one where we... That video that said that uh, the, all them kids got saved at youth rally, he's one of them. He's up there working the camera right now. 
I could sit here all day. And I might. I don't know. But you got to go somewhere and help yourself. We see that divine appointment. And then we see a display of his might. See, he directed them to launch out. And I wrote this here. You'll never see his might hanging out by the shore. You're never going to see his might hanging out by the shore. Listen, he's expecting you to be all in. He's expe- Listen, he told Peter. He, Peter said, can I, can I come? Can I, can I come to where you are? He said, come on, Peter. But Peter would have never walked on water if he'd have just kept tiptoeing. He had, to, he had to say, you know what, all right, I'm going. Here I am. I'm walking on water. He would have never got there just sitting on the boat. He would have never got there if he would have never left that spot he was in right there. He would have never had the opportunity to see Jesus walking on water and then himself walk to Jesus on water and then uh, start to sink and get saved by Jesus right there in the middle of the ocean. A display of his might. How many of you in here this morning can say, honestly, that this year you've seen a display of his might in your life? You've seen a change. You've seen families change. Your family changed. Your home changed. Your life changed. Your desires and your want to's changed. Can you honestly say this morning, is that that stupid vacuum cleaner? Can one of y'all turn it off? Is it on? We got a robot vacuum cleaner here. And I guess it just does what it wants to do. We just saw the Lord speaking through a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yeah, it's taking off. You're never going to see it hanging out right there by the shore. You know what he wants you to do? Listen, I'm almost done. I know you're tired. I, I watched him miss that field goal too. Some of y'all, some of y'all prayed, Lord, let him hit, the, let him miss this field goal. I'll be in church in the morning. I'll change my life, whatever it takes. And some of y'all was praying for him to hit it. God help you, brother Mac. If you was praying for a Yankee to hit a field goal over us, I'll pray for you. These altars are open. Amen. But I was up with I was up watching it too. I was sitting there thinking, this is it. This is where we're gonna lose. And divine appointment come by. <laughs> and the wind and the breath of God breathed into <laughs> Amen. He just said for that ball. In an indoor stadium, the wind blew the ball to the left. <laughs> Amen. You're never going to see the might of the Lord hanging out by the shore. Listen, the draw wasn't just for them either. It affected everybody around them. See, in verse number 7, he he hollers back and says, Hey, y'all come help us. We've got too many fish. See, What God's doing here ought to be affecting those around you. Amen. And it has. Sound boy. Where are you at? You're walking around here like you pay the rent. See, I look look at the average. Brother Doug, y'all came. And now, look, your brother's here. Your buddy's here. Your mom and dad's here. That's how it works. You just you, you just come and you get in. You get to seeing how good it is. And then you think, man, I'm going to call my buddy and see if he wants to come. And then you think, well, man, it's so And then he thinks, man, it's so good. 
I, I'm going to try to get my mama to come. And then, and then he says, man, that's so good. Hey, I, I'm going to go tell my neighbor, hey, man, you ought to come to church with me. It's so good down there. You, you, it, all, it ought to just, yeah, even James. We're still picking him up. Bless Brother Doug's heart. He's got a crown in heaven for James. You think I believe that, James? Amen. The church is going to have to start taking up offering for Brother Doug to feed this feller. Amen. But it wasn't just, it, wasn't, it didn't just affect Peter, James, and John. It affected his, their friends. Let me ask you this. I'm moving on. I'm almost done. It's what's going on in your life, what the Lord's doing in your life, is it affecting others? Are you just holding it in like, are you just keeping it? Well, I, I, I don't want to tell nobody. It ought to affect those around you. And lastly, we see a, not only do we see a divine appointment, a display of his might, but then we see a direction change. In verse 11, and they, that, and they had brought their ships to land and they forsook all. And followed him. Their direction changed that day. They were astonished by his word. They were astonished by his work. And then these men by faith forsook all. To follow Christ. Let me just say this. We don't have a clue. What the future holds for this place. And man, if we, if we as a church, as, as families could be all in, committed in the year 2023, because let me ask you a question. This is just between you and the Lord now. You don't have to raise your hand or nothing, but how many of you would say that this year you weren't quite all the way in, but still look how, how much God worked? Imagine if we all got all the way in and just said, you know what? I'm here. I'm in. Come what may, Lord, we're in. And I know I'm not one, you know, I, I'll tell you all the time, I'm not one for themes and stuff, resolutions and everything. I I think if you want to lose weight, you'll try to lose weight, whether it be January 1st or March. Or if you want to start saving money, you'll do it whenever you want to really start to. I, but it is a new year, and it is a new start. And I want to ask you this question this morning. I want you to really search your heart. Search your, search your mind and your heart and say, Lord... Will you help me to really be all in? Not just, not just for a little while while the, the newness of the year is here, and it is. There'll be 10 million people join the gym t tomorrow. And then come April, it'll be back to the normal old guys that'll just go in there. And there'll be, there'll be diet plans, and there'll be bank accounts, savings accounts opened up, and they're going to be college funds started and all. And listen, that's how, that's how it is. And then it dies out, and then we're back to waiting on the new year again. But I want to ask you this question. Would you be willing for this year, for this, forget the year, would you be willing for this time, this moment, to say, you know what? I'm getting all in. You know, when I when I became pastor, I had I had a, a preacher friend of mine ask me. He said, "What's what is your, where do you see yourself there in ten years? What are your goals? What are your?" I said, "Well, I'd like to see a school here, Christian school. I'd like to see, I'd like to see our kids be able to come to school here at this church." I'd like to see for our 
some of our ladies and our men work here at the church and, and be able to come here and work in a Christian environment. I, I'd love that. I'd love for us to finish that gym back there. Have a basketball court and classrooms and concession stands and, and, and all this stuff. And, and I tell you what, you said, well, that's, man, that's a lot. But you know what? He, he brought so many fish that he can sink two boats in about ten minutes. And then, and then, Peter, the same one, to pay his taxes later on, he took a fish and put money in his mouth and brought it up to the surface for Peter to get the money out and pay the taxes. And you don't think he can't finish at that gym? That's why I fish so much, y'all. I'm trying to find that check. I'm trying. I don't know if it's going to come by way of a, an animal, a deer, a duck. But one day I might open up a mouth and one be be a check in there. I don't know. But here's what it's going to take. It's going to have to take. All of us being all in. Not just half. Not just a portion. And you say, but but I'm I'm this old or that old. I, you know, I don't really know anybody or anything. Let me just say this. It don't matter who you are sitting in here this morning. You say, I've only been here a couple of times. It don't matter. God's got a task and a job for you to do right here. Teenager, young person, young adult, he's got a job for you. He's got something for you to do at Grace Baptist Church. He's just waiting on you. He's waiting on you to be all in. Some of you say, man, it'd be nice to have a school. Well, you know what it's going to take. It'd be nice to finish that gym. Yeah, well, you know what it's going to take for us to be all the way in. Let's all stand. Heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. That's my challenge to us this year, 2023. I'm challenging Grace Baptist Church. Let's all together, hand in hand, you know, just like when we as kids, jumping into the deep end, cannonball. We need to do it this morning. We need to do it in our kids' ministry. We need to do it in our bus ministry. We need to do it in our young adult ministry. We need to do it in our senior ministry. We need to do it. We need the whole church, the whole church, needs to decide in our teens, our young people, we're going to be all in this year. And then we're going to stand back at the end of the year and say, look what God has done. As they sing, won't you come? That's the challenge this morning. Are you going to be all in? God woke me up That's the challenge. Morning. Will you be all the in with us this year? Untold, a precious loving family in a house we call home. Come on. Are you willing to say, you know what? I'm going to take it week by week, day by day, but I'm going to be all in this year. The peace he settled in my heart since the day he saved me. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to be all the way in. Are moving. He's answered prayers I've prayed for years. Never once has he left me. Made a way when all I saw was impossibility. My heart bows in worship. My lips sing his praise. We will choose to serve the Lord for the rest. 
Just look at all God has done. Look what God has done. I stand amazed to think of His love. I don't deserve. want to give this invitation you know we uh, can't be all in unless we're in what I mean by that is knowing that we're saved knowing that we're born again you know we a lot of folks live their life under the name of religion and Christianity but there's very few that have a relationship with Christ I want to ask you this morning if you know beyond the shadow of a doubt a hundred percent that if you were to die today, that you'd go to heaven. You say, preacher, I don't know 100%. Would you be willing to just slip up your hand and just say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to come to you. We're not that kind of church that would come and embarrass you. But maybe you just slip up your hand and say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not 100% sure that if I died today that I'd go to heaven. Will you pray for me? Is there anybody? Just slip up your hand and put it right back down just quickly. Say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not 100% sure that if I died today that I'd go to heaven. Is there anybody, anybody in the building today say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not 100%. Anybody at all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, how about this? How about this? This morning, I, I, saw, I saw that hand. How about this this morning? If, how many of you would be willing just by a show of hands to say, Preacher, you know, I listen, this is this is between you and God. This is between you and the Lord. I want you to really examine your heart. And say, well, preacher, I don't want you to raise your hand for me to see. I don't want you to raise your hand for your, your spouse or anybody else. Nobody's looking. This is between you and the Lord. This is between you, strictly between you and God. How many of you this morning would be willing to say, Lord, just by a show of hands, Lord, I'm all the way in. I'm all the way in. I'm all in. Would you just slip up your hand? Listen, it's not for me. It's not for me. It's for him. Between you and him. How many of you would say, Lord, I'm all in. Hold them up. Don't be ashamed. Don't be, don't be scared. I'm all in. I'm all in. Quickly, I, I saw one hand go up a minute ago right there at the end about, about salvation. If you're in here this morning, you're not sure that you died, go to heaven. Would you be willing to come and have somebody show you with a Bible? Would you like to come? You want somebody to come to you? You want to talk after church? Anybody else? Man, what a what a blessing, what a service! And I listen. I I really believe God's going to do something big. I don't just say that, you know. It, a lot of guys, you know, they just say that and try to hype you up, you know, just get you primed up. But I learned a long time ago, especially with Baptists, you can't prime them. You know that little primer bulb on Baptists is usually broke, dry rotted, broke, won't even won't even hardly crank, but. Boy, you get some Baptists fired up now. You get some stuff done. and uh, But I, I really believe that God's got big, big things in store for our church. And for your family, your, your, think about that. For your family. For you. Personally. Amen. All right. Listen, let's all stand. We'll be dismissed here. Right before we leave, Miss Natalie. Tomorrow's your birthday. Juliet. 
oh, got the wrong little girl here. <laughs> Miss Juliet, tomorrow's your birthday. How old are you going to be? 17. <laughs> if you ever talked to Miss Juliet, you would think she's 17. Amen. All right, well, can we sing happy birthday to Miss Juliet? All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Juliet. Happy birthday to you. Amen. All right, listen. Don't forget to pray for Rhett. That's Rhett Purple. That's Brother Austin and Miss Peyton's little boy. He's having some he's having some complications with his breathing. Okay, he's in the NICU. They came and got him yesterday. And uh, now I did talk to Brother Austin, so just you know, take what I'm about to say as a grain of salt coming from. But dads usually we don't know much. You know, the doctor comes in, and we just you know we're kind of. But what he was what was told to me from Brother Austin. And uh, Miss Bailey, I'm sure, can verify this, but um, that he had a he had some fluid in his lungs, and it was actually I'll, I'll let Brother Austin tell it was a miracle of of what happened when he was born. The umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck three times, um, but God knew what He was doing, and uh, and had them uh, have a C-section instead of a regular birth, and and that saved his life. And so now he's got, he had some fluid in his lungs and uh, he was trying to, his little body was trying to push that fluid out of his lungs and as a result of that, he, he punctured a small tear hole in one of his lungs. Uh, but the doctors do say that that's, that's healing on its own and they've got him on oxygen and there is still some fluid, uh, but they're just, <clears throat> eventually he'll, he'll push it out and, and when his lungs get a little stronger. So he's having to spend a few days in the NICU. So if you would, if you got Brother Austin's number, Miss Peyton, Facebook, whatever, just please reach out. Let them know you're praying for them and, uh, and talk to them, okay? Let them know you're praying. And, and brother, brother Don Richards, too, as well. He's going in for surgery on Wednesday. <clears throat> he's going in for a heart cath. And it's a very, uh, uh, it's very critical procedure for him given his age some of the conditions that he's under as well so please please pray for brother Don Richards if you would uh, he goes in for surgery at 8 o'clock on Wednesday morning so if you would please pray for him ask the Lord to, to touch his body and give the doctors wisdom as they go throughout these surgeries okay alright how many of y'all going to be back tonight I'm going to put you on the spot amen, amen. choir practice 4 o'clock 4 o'clock choir practice, 5, five o'clock church. And uh, make our visitors feel welcome if you would. And uh, Brother Christopher, if you would, when you get done, if you'd come see me. And uh, you're dismissed. Amen.